Thanks for joining us for this episode. And I wanted to remind you that you actually can watch video versions of each episode by subscribing to the Church Advance YouTube channel. All you gotta do is head over to youtube.com slash at Church Advance or see the link in the show notes and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Of course, you can follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening to podcasts. But wanted to give a special plug for the video version. Well, I'm really excited about getting to today's episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Church Advance Podcast. This is uh, Brian Sams, your host, man, and we're so glad to have you back. Heading into the fall 2023, what an awesome season. I don't know about you guys, uh, but we have had an amazing summer at River City Baptist Church. I just really am excited about seeing what's going to actually happen this fall because this summer we were having a full auditorium. We had a great week at camp with our teenagers, as I hope all of you did. I mean, we're just excited. I'm expecting when everybody comes back from vacation, we're all kind of staring at each other again. We're going to be looking at an exciting church. We were, uh, we've been measuring some of our some of our um, uh, metrics over the last couple of years. Just so many people have joined, have been saved and baptized. Man, this is just a great day to serve the Lord, and I, I know you guys are enjoying uh, God's blessings on your ministries and life as well. Thank you for all the feedback. I've I've got to connect with so many of you, email and text messages. We're excited. Thank you for listening. Luke, welcome, man. I feel like uh, we we haven't chatted for a while. We we do these sometimes in batches, so uh, it's good to see you, man. You had a good summer. Hey, yeah, it's uh, I cannot complain. It's been good, and yeah, we we haven't uh, actually recorded anything in since since like the week before Easter. I think is the last recording oh. date we had. Uh, now the listeners out there are like, nah, man, like you guys were just on, but you know, we, we've, we've, uh, we've shared all sometimes the times it, and secrets. That's, that's how we roll. Sometimes it gets us in trouble because people think we time things. Um, we, it, it's not like that really though. Well, Hey, we're going to kick this segment off. I'm, I'm glad to have actually with me here in the studio, my friend, Dan, Dan Purdy. Welcome, man. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on today. Dan is a member of River City Baptist Church. He's, uh, tell us a bit about your family. Yeah, so I actually grew up, I got seven siblings, um, grew up in Connecticut, and me, my wife, and my two children just moved down here about two years ago, uh, got plugged into this great church, great family, and now we are stuck in Jacksonville because I like this church. So it's been it's been great. It's been perfect. I love getting to know Pastor, um, spend time at the gym with him outside of church, stuff like that. So yeah, it's been really good. Yeah, so that's why Dan's here. I mean, uh, we just have a great friendship. We uh, we work together uh, at the gym a couple times a week and just stay in touch with things related to our physical health and conditioning. And uh, Dan, as I've, I've, as I've really got to know him and appreciate his friendship, he's just opened up a little window on just some expertise that God's given him in this uh, area just as far as his experience, working out and being healthy and helping me, really. Uh, being a great friend to me, just helping me on my journey, which has been challenging at times. But uh, I said, you know what, Dan, I'd love to get you on, man. We talk so much about health. We talk so much about getting in shape and really just for our own just well-being. We, You know, it, it's so many layers. It's it's physical, but it's also emotional. It's mental. It's, it's, it's bringing yourself, I think, into a kind of a holistic approach to life. I mean, we'd like to all say, well, the most important thing is our spiritual life. And that I think that's true. But if you're, if your physical life is completely out of whack, it's going to affect your spiritual yeah. life. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's really, it's your physical, your mental and your spiritual life. And it's kind of getting all three of those into some, into a, like a unified uh, direction. And so if you are just focusing on the spiritual side and you're not focusing on the mental or the physical side, then it does start to hinder it because you get reduced cognitive function. Um, your exercise routine goes down, your health goes down. And so even though you might be very spiritually connected and have a great relationship with God, you're still lacking the physical energy to maybe go out and do what God's called us here to do, which would be be disciples and have that energy to actually go out and Absolutely. preach the gospel. You know, it's interesting you mentioned now that bringing them in sync uh, in Third John... John talks to a pastor by the name of Gaius, 
I think it's verse four. He says, I wish above all things that you, your, your health prospers like your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So here's a pastor that was having obviously some kind of physical challenge. His soul was right. You know, his heart was where it needed to be, but his physical condition was lagging. I'm not saying it's because he didn't exercise. I'm just saying something was there. And Paul wished for him to have, or John, excuse me, wished for him to have his physical condition and his spiritual condition sync together. So... Well, they had, they had definitely um, has this side of things and with with a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And I wanted to bring him on here. I want to I want to steer this conversation toward our ministry leaders. And Dan's helped me immensely. And and I joke all the time, I'm not where I need to be, but Dan's been helping me. And 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 I have seen. Well, and, and no one's ever where they need where they want to be because that's a, like a perfect end yeah. goal is what we want. And it's more about the journey. And just improvement in general. Yeah, no, I pre- and I appreciate it. He's been, I mean, he could he could you know be like Pastor, you're you know you're a loser, but he does he doesn't do that. So so I want to start. Oh, I want to start here. To do. Uh, oh, man. Uh, okay, so how did you get into just physical fitness in general? I mean, you, you know, you didn't just start that probably when you're in sixth grade. So what like yeah. what happened? What's what's that with you? Yeah. So like I said, I mean, growing up, I had seven siblings, four brothers, three sisters. So, I mean, our house was crazy. It was hectic. We're fighting. You know, we're always like physically active kids, riding bikes, skateboarding, all those things. Um, lifting weights for me, my dad always had weight equipment, but he never really let us touch it because back in the day, they said it would stunt your growth. So we weren't allowed to touch it. Uh, so when I got to college, that was my freedom, right? I We had a gym at college. Um, I had a really close buddy of mine, um, Chuck Craig, who got me into weightlifting in college. But I wasn't really focused on the health side of fitness. It was more just lifting weights, getting stronger, getting bigger. Uh, carried that on throughout college. And then after college, got out into the work world, stress, life, everything that comes with it. Um, I was still working out a little bit, but again, my health was gradually declining. I was gaining more weight, um, having issues with anger, uh, having issues with just all these, all these issues. I didn't understand where they were coming from. And those were big challenges for me, both in my marriage. And then I really, when I was about 26, uh, we were having our first child, my son. And I just, I was struggling with anger problems. I was struggling with just anxiety. I was struggling with all these different areas of my life. And obviously I was busy. Everyone's busy. Like, you know, I'm not going to say no one, no one else is busy, but um, that's when I started to dive into, you know, what's actually causing these things. So like, why am I having these issues because they're coming from somewhere and I don't want to be angry. Like I'm a Christian. Like I have no, there's no reason I should be angry. Like what's causing this. And as I started diving into it and doing research, and that was, that was almost 10 years ago now. Um, it's really led me to diet, like diet and your overall health and just how much you're focusing on your health. Cause if you're, if you're not only, and it, it goes beyond that, it can also go into like your vocation status. Like, are you doing your purpose in life? So there's definitely like a spiritual and a mental right. side to it as well. Um, but physical physical health is just so important. Um, your hormones are completely uh, regulated by your gut. And so what you eat and the inflammation or the healing power of the food can actually regulate your testosterone for guys, uh, estrogen for women. It's, it's, it's incredible like how much of our health is actually affected by just what we eat. Mm. Um, and it's becoming even more of an epidemic with fast foods and with these ultra processed foods that are convenient because we have such busy lives. We, we tend to choose just convenient options. Mm. And unfortunately, those options have a lot of inflammatory ingredients and questionable ingredients that shouldn't even necessarily be in food uh, that the FDA, you know, says that they're OK in small amounts and maybe they won't affect you in small amounts. But when you're eating them all day long, every day, they take a toll on us and we get hormone disruption, we get reduced energy, we get a reduced cognitive function. And all these all these issues arise out of just our diet when if we switch that and really cleaned up. Uh, so really, uh, that's interesting because I've, I've heard this, I've heard you articulate to me, but somebody just want to point out to the audience, you really, the whatever snapped in you came through realizing that physical exercise was not it. Yeah. It had to be like a combo. Yeah. Because you can work out, you can you can hit the gym, but if you're not fueling properly, mm-hmm. you're still going to have all these yeah. issues. And frankly, quite transparently, 
transparently something you've been working with me on even recently. I've been working out hard in the gym, but I'm, I'm working toward being able to get that fuel properly so that it's working together. That can be frustrating if they're not both working in sync. So you got, you got some spiritual challenges waking you up to a, 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 a fuel problem. And then, and then another comment I want to make to the audience and, and look guys, I think we've all become aware in more recent years as pastors that these issues of hormone issues and, um, physical challenges are, have become more, I think pastors have had to become more aware of this as people have wrestled with literal physical components leading them to certain things. I'm not saying that every problem is a, a physical problem that needs medicine or whatever. What I'm saying, we've, we've, we've waken up to a reality is that it is possible to have a chemical imbalance oh, or hormone yeah. imbalance yeah. where you need to get it regulated. And, and what you're basically saying is it can, some of that can be aligned more properly with, yeah, with eating the right things. Yeah, and just having a perfect diet still doesn't make you operate fully. You still yeah. have to have the spiritual balance. You still have to have the mental balance. So you can still be mentally imbalanced and physically very healthy. And I know I kind of you had asked me like how did I get into fitness, and I kind of got off on to <laughs> a totally different rant because uh, that's one of my problems. But uh, yeah, I, so just to just to bring it back and close that thought out, uh, what got me into um, where I'm at now with focusing so heavily on the health and the fitness is just coming to that realization, uh, when I was at stressful points in my life that it really, like it, you have to focus on all three. It's gotta be all three and it can't just be, you know, if, so say your hormones are disrupted and you take hormone therapy to get your hormones back on track, that doesn't mean that your mental side is just going to heal. Yeah. It doesn't mean that your physical health is just going to improve. You just fix one part of the problem. It's really got to be just small decisions and it might sound overwhelming if you're in a position where you're like everything's just completely out of whack right now my spiritual my mental my physical it really just comes down to your habits um just creating starting off with starting off just creating good healthy habits and that can be from a very very simple basic level like simply just drinking more water um but just getting to the habit of making consciously making good decisions because whether you have Healthy habits are unhealthy habits. They're both there because of practice. Well, that actually, I'm going to skip down to a question. Uh, I wasn't going to get to this later, but you brought it up, and I think I, I just want to jump on it while it's hot. So, okay, so I'm listening. I've been here before where where I needed to restart something. And, like, for me, I feel like, for me personally, the gym part is, like, the thing that's going well. And then I think spiritually, like, well, too, I'm really dialed in and trying to focus right now on, on fuel. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's just take any pastor out there, any anybody listening, and they're like, kind of like you described, there's just a few different things that are off. So what are maybe like three or four, whatever, like immediate, just quick, you can change this, this, and this today mm -hmm. and start seeing some positive physical results. Yes, no, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, my number one would be just water. Just start by drinking more water. The average American drinks two and a half to four cups of water a day. Mm. And as guys specifically, since I think that's the majority of the audience here, we should be drinking 15 and a half cups of water a day on average. So we're drastically dehydrated, which that in and of itself causes cognitive issues in your brain, causes you can have kidney issues, you can have slow metabolism because of that, um, excess stored fat or visceral fats, um, joint issues. So even just your physical health is so implemented by just your water because your joints will actually, the fluids in them dry up when you're not mm. hydrated, constipation. There's so many issues that can come from just not drinking water. So that'd be my first thing is just, just drink more water. Try to get, um, you know, try to get that amount of water in, in 15 cups, which is about a gallon a day. Mm. Um, that's a great thing. You'll notice improvements just after a week with that. Uh, sugar, cutting back on sugar or just eliminating sugar, depending on where you're at. Um, I'm not advocating for living a sugar-free life. But just cutting back on your sugar intake even just 90% of the time. Mm. And folk, so then that would be a cutting back on sugar. So like look at your drinks that you're drinking. Um, even energy drinks, a lot of them have a lot of sugar. Look at your coffees that you're getting from Starbucks. I know we're both sitting Starbucks right now. But neither, hey, of, us, but, hey, neither of us have any record. Uh, this is black. Yeah, I specifically, <laughs> this is black with no sweetener. Dan alluded mm -hmm. it for me so yeah. he can verify. I have that. no sweetener in mind. I will say this. Go ahead. Go I'm going to chime in and brag on myself. I drank my first black coffee cold brew the other day. Mm -hmm. 
Did you? Go. I, to some hey, extent, I had to just gold. make gold it happen. But uh, anyway, so I'm getting there. I mean, that's not a bad principle. I mean, it, just to keep it like really simple for people, like think about it like this: don't drink calories. Mm -hmm. Like drink a bunch of water, but then like uh, tons of yeah. people would drink cokes or yeah. Save, we don't have save your calories for food. Yeah, save, yeah, right. Really? Yeah. So you got drink water. You got cu cut back sugar. Yeah, cut back on sugar. Yeah, and I'm not saying don't don't eat like a cheesecake if you're going out. I'm just saying like it's the 90 percent of the time it's the coke you're having with lunch every day. Do we really need to have that coke? You know. Yeah. Um, and it goes more than just Coke. It could be the lemonades. It could be yeah. sweet teas. It's everything. There, there's just an insane amount of sugar because that's just what we do in America here. Um, so that's two. A third one would be try to just implement more of a whole food diet um, or I guess eliminate fast food, really, like right. ultra processed foods, fast foods. Yeah, really just focus on getting like your protein sources from whole sources, meats. Um, try to get carbohydrates that are more wholesome. And then, you know, get a good intake of fruits, vegetables. And I mean, if you if you have questions on how to balance that stuff out, there's there's tons of resources on the internet. We're gonna get to where you can reach out to um a resource here later on just to get more information on that as well. But Okay. Let me let me so let's let's add a fourth one. Let's let's talk just a second about exercise. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the guy who's no doubt out there, because I'm one of you that you're thinking to yourself. I don't and I have a little more after this. Too. Okay, and I don't have a lot of time. Okay. But talk to that guy, he's, you know, you get you can get overwhelmed and think, okay, dude, I might have to go to the gym for two hours a day. Okay, let's say, what are, what's a simple exercise step you could take? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm just trying to like, I'm just going to start drinking water, I'm going to cut out some sugar, I'm going to, you know, scale back on McDonald's or whatever. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. Get like, what's a quick something you could do to just get anything going yeah. exercise-wise? Yeah, so I'm not going to say start running. I'm not going to say go for a walk, although those are great things that get your heart moving. They're decent for cardio health. Probably the best thing that you could do is just drop and do some push-ups. In the morning, get some push-ups in your routine. Get some sit-ups. Start doing some resistance exercises that actually cause resistance on your muscles because that stimulates, not only does it stimulate lean muscle growth, but it stimulates fat burn. It stimulates metabolism boosting. It stimulates protein synthesis, which means you're getting uh, better results for your muscles. So much can, even if you don't have time to go to the gym, there's, you don't have to do a whole home workout either. It could be just, I mean, I think for a while you were doing push-ups while you're making coffee in the morning, right? Right. Or something right. like that. Yeah. So it's literally like, you know, hit the go button on the Keurig and what do you have? You have 120 seconds. Probably where it's brewing. How many push-ups can you do in 120 seconds? What else are you going to do? You're sitting there staring at the whoop coffee coming out of the machine. So, so good. And like during the day, like if you're feeling a little lethargic at your desk and you're kind of getting a little tired, just drop down, do some push-ups, you know, do like do some, do some squats or some lunges in place, anything to really get your body some resistance. Yeah, Dan really, really helped me with the, the mental switch from cardio to resistance training. And I'm, again, I'm still working through it, but I mean, I've made that shift in my mind, particularly over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. It really, really helped me in knowing to, what we just got to accept the realities that resistance training burns calories longer mm -hmm. than a, a cardio burst. And I'm not demonizing cardio. I'm just saying that cardio tends to burn calories, whereas resistance training burns fat. Mm -hmm. So if you can look at it more that way, cardio is really just going to consume calories that are already in your blood sugar from your system. They're going to tap into maybe a little bit of the glycogen that's stored in your body, but those are quick reserves. And cardio is, unless you're like really, really into fitness, it's really, if you're just doing a little bit of cardio on a daily basis, you're just going to deplete your your blood sugar levels. And resistance, yeah. like Dan said, can be so accessible, and I love those quick tips. You said you had a fifth one? Fifth one, sleep. Sleep. Yeah, sleep's huge. So I know we're all busy, and a lot of times we prioritize other things, and then we're up late, but we still got to get up early, and our sleep just lacks. I think we could all just structure, just try to structure your day more optimally. I mean, I know personally I still waste time throughout the day. I catch myself where I'm working on something. I might be on social media working on something, uploading something, and then... 15 minutes later, I'm scrolling and I don't even know why. Um, mm. So just, it's really just, it comes down to really just optimizing and understanding like what's most important in your life. Mm -hmm. And although fitness and health might not seem like a priority, just start making good conscious decisions and habits and building that up. But yeah, getting eight hours of sleep, I know that might be a lot for some people, but that's really imperative to health. I mean, so many things happen from, from cognitive function repair to cellular repair, muscle repair, uh, digestion, metabolism, like everything, there's a lot that's regulated in our sleep. So it's super important. Yeah. And I, mean, I want to echo that. I found myself, I think I may have put this in a lesson previously, Luke, I can't remember, but 
Um, you know, the waste, the most wasted hour of the day is the first 15 minutes, the last 15 minutes, the 15 minutes before lunch and 15 minutes after lunch. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. That's true. That's true. I, I, I haven't heard that, but it's true. I'm just telling you, I have a medium sized church, I have a pretty, you know, extensive traveling. All, I mean, I got a lot going on, but I, I'm afraid that we've just got into a habit of killing more time than we'd like to admit. Mm-hmm. And if we just focus, man, at work when we need to work, and Matt Chandler used to describe it as, you should be working in such a way that when it's time to go to bed, you're basically falling into bed. Mm-hmm. There's no need to wind down. Right, just grind the shin. And I'm afraid that we're, there's a lot of people not, you know, maybe wasting a lot of time. And it, and I think it affects all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't be, I hate to even say it because it's going to sound like me and judgmental. I'm not trying to be, but you can't be lazy and work. Well, 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 you can't, <laughs> but you can't do that and expect, mm-hmm. I mean, if you are lazy in your work ethic and stuff, you can't expect that you're going to, the gym's going to work out, that yeah. you're going to be disciplined to eat correctly, or that you're going to be staying focused on your work mm-hmm. so that you work when you work and play when you need to play. And then of yeah. course, then you're right. And you used a good word there, you used discipline. And really discipline is such a proactive word. Uh, there's nothing reactive about discipline. You don't, you don't just wake up and you're like, oh, I get out of bed and I'm going to drop down and give 50 push-ups right now. That's not a reactive thing that people do. Mm. That's a very structured, um, oh, I just forgot the word. What was the word you used? Uh, discipline, discipline. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's a very disciplined thing. And you made the conscious decision to do that. That's a conscious decision to make a healthy habit mm. of doing something to better yourself. And that's how we, that's how we optimize our lives is by disciplining our lives and structuring our lives in a way that is going to optimize ourselves. That's so solid. Okay. One more question before I get into some of the stuff that you're doing and some of the opportunities that we have for the audience, but okay. Just give me why, why would physical health be so important specifically for people that are in ministry? Yeah. I mean, that's an easy one because you're, you have a calling from God to, to deliver the message that God's laid on your heart and to do the calling that God's given to you. And if you don't have the physical and or the mental health because your physical health's out of whack, how effective are you being? And I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not being effective, but could you be more effective? Could you, could you be, have more energy or could you maybe even set a better example to someone who, who isn't in this circle? And I mean, I'm not going to go into like, uh, I don't really want to like touch on like looks and what those can do. Generally speaking, if, if you're fit, people will listen to you more. Yep. You seem to have just more credibility because you're fit and it shows that you have discipline in your life. Yep. And I'm not saying that that affects ministry in any way. I'm just saying that's, I think that's just a targeted thing for anyone to do. But it could. I mean, yep. like, like if I am in decent shape, it's not going to negatively affect. Anybody. And God's going to, God's going to give the word out there. So I don't think yeah. looks have nothing to do with it. And that's not what I'm trying to say, because I don't think looks have anything if, 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 they hear the word, it's God who's going to be doing the work. In the yeah, that's a great point. And, but, but could you, could you just have more energy and just have more uh, vigor around the service? And, you know, is there a way you can optimize your health and even not even for in the ministry? What about for your family? So you were mentioning that you, you've gone on these hikes and spent time with your family because it, it, this audience here, just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you can't enjoy your time. It's not all about the ministry. It's also about what being a leader for your family, right? And if you're out on vacation and you're doing some exercise, you know, hiking through the mountains or walking around Disney World. Oh, I, sorry, I said Disney. No, that was uh, great. <laughs> um, that's up. But um, <laughs> now we're all cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, but if you're, um, yeah, you're just out and you're exercising and, and you're out of breath and you're not able to like, or you're, you come home from the office at night and you're not able to play with like your kids just because you're exhausted. And what about, think about your kids' health too. So if you're making choices that are reactive and aren't the best dietary choices and health choices for you, how is that impacting your family and what's that teaching your kids as they grow up too? Mm. So are we teaching them the priority and not that they should be so focused on bodybuilding or having like a, from the physical physique side or from like what other people think, but just for optimum health. Like, I mean, I, I could be taking this out of context where the, you know, our God, our bodies are God's temple, right? I mean, Absolutely. I think it's just, taking care of them as best as we possibly can, not building ego around, oh, I look this good and this is what I've achieved, but just just living a healthy life and taking care of this body that God gave us because we only have one and mm-hmm. it's got to last us the whole time we're here. And probably the most important point would be like, what if through implementing health and fitness and other exercises, 
you were able to extend your life. And that gave you how much more time to minister and to be involved in your calling, specifically for this audience. Yeah. The uh, way I've said that before is, and, and again, I'm I'm, in, I'm on the journey with everybody and probably not the greatest example. I've, I've, I've wor- I'm working. I'm a work in progress. But I was all work in progress. I would say that um, if I... If, if, if I can, if, if God chose to allow me to have cancer and afflict me with something that was unrelated to my choices, that's his business. Mm-hmm. Like if God, if God, if God allowed me to get an accident and my life was over, yeah. you know, that God is God. Yeah. But if, if I put myself into heart disease or mm-hmm. some other problem because I chose, yeah. I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Like I want to, I want to. I want to let God be God, but at the same time, like you just said, if I can optimize how long I'm here, if, if it had anything to do with my choices, mm-hmm. man, so being an example, having energy and vigor, being there for your children and have a longevity in ministry, I think we'd all want, I think we all want that. So I yeah, think that's and super relevant. Maybe it'll hit home even more with like an example, but like your car, you know, how many of us are driving around with mud all over our car, you know, tons of garbage laying around the floor in our car, you know. I mean, none of us are really doing that. Like our cars aren't pigsties. We try to take care of our cars and we're not even our bodies. Like we're just a spiritual being and God's given us these bodies for a certain period of time here. And he's even specifically asked us to take care of them. So like, you know, treat your body like you would. I mean, I guess I could, hopefully everyone takes care of their cars. <laughs> Otherwise that's not a good example. No, it's a but, great example. That's exactly right. You wouldn't. I mean, even if you don't, you know you should. Yeah. Like even if you're not if you're not if you're not sweeping up your car, vacuuming it and stuff and keeping it straightened yeah, up. If you're not putting heaps of garbage in your car, yeah. and really we shouldn't be eating heaps of garbage. That's great. So we shouldn't be putting like all these things in our body that aren't optimizing our bodies and keeping our bodies running right. Super. Yeah. All right, Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip now. That's that's one amazing. Let's I wanna talk about uh some of the things that you're doing, some of the things that you're starting. And we're going to create some opportunities for our audience here. Um, I want to introduce you to the preacher world. And some of you are going to be coming to the conference in February. That'd be awesome. Dan will be here. You guys can co- connect here. But you are, you're, you're kind of on the, on the cusp of kind of following something that's been on your heart for, you know, some time about mm-hmm. actually, you know, being a, being a fitness coach. Um, so just how, how, you know, how does that look? Kind of, kind of, what avenues are you starting to implement to go down the road of, of mm-hmm. fitness coach opportunities? Yeah, and before everyone's eyes glaze over, I mean, it's odd. I didn't get into coaching because I wanted to get in coaching. Um, fitness and health has just been a passion of mine for, like I said, for like the last eight, nine years, and just through I, I love researching stuff. So I've just been, I've been pretty much going to school, just researching everything there is to know. And I love sharing this information with people. There's a lot of people in my direct network that I just try to help out. I give this information away. And it's just gotten to a point where I was like, man, like, how can I help more people? And so specifically, I run free challenges. Let's talk about that yeah. quick first. Yeah. Um, just so people don't think I'm here just to like get money. Um, we run these challenges for free just because we're trying to get people healthy. So I care about, I just get such joy out of helping people get uh, better habits, better health, better fitness. And so we have these, well, when were we talking about? The September 4th. Se- September 4th. This is, we're going to go ahead and put it out there. September so we're just going to put, let's talk about that first so people get. Yeah, so like for this is this exclusive Church Advance podcast mm-hmm. opportunity, a 28-day fitness challenge led by Dan. Mm-hmm. So just just tell us what that's going to look like and what the free opportunity for the audience. Yeah. So the free opportunity we have, we do have limited seating for it, which we'll talk about after, but um, this, it's a four week challenge. And what it's going to do, I have an app on my phone. Fo- I have a phone app that I've put together, has all the workout programs, has dietary recommendations, uh, even meal suggestions for based on what diet you think you're capable of doing or what you want to do. Uh, we have a couple different diet options. And what it's, what it is, is me just working with you on one-on-one for a whole month. Um, so it's four weeks of really just free training. Um, at the end of the four weeks, I want to hear, I want to see results. I want to, you know, I want to see how you're feeling. Uh, and then I do offer services be above and beyond that for continued service. Yeah. So that's really it. And if, and I have options for you, if you want to do it for yourself and just keep moving forward, I have options that'll just set you up and get you going. Yeah, on your own. So if you don't want to work with me personally, and you just you're like, oh, I got this. This is easy. Then I have options for you there too. So yeah. So so the cool thing is, I mean, I'm already telling you, me and me and Angie are jumping in uh, one 
actually, by the time you guys hear this and get started, we're already going to go through one. So this will be our second one. So guys, I mean, here's an opportunity for you to connect with really a guy's uh, got an incredible knowledge base. Well, one time when we first started working out together, I was like, damn, dude, like you talk about this like second nature, like you, you, you know, this is something that, you know, you, you have a gift in, you know, just like me talking about church and preaching. Like I can rattle about that all day. I mean, Dan's like that with this. So, so the idea, so here's what's going to happen in the show notes. Dan's going to have an email address and all the audience, if you, it's going to be first come first serve up to a, a cap for this specific challenge. You just send an email to Dan and Dan's going to put a group together and Dan will, Dan will run with it from there. Beyond that, uh, Dan will talk to you about some ongoing uh, things that he does. And I will tell you, I can tell you, I use the app. I am, mm -hmm. you know, I'm working with Dan personally. I get it. I get the notifications every day. I went to the gym this morning. Uh, yeah, Dan was, <laughs> I was at the gym. This yeah. Morning. You were actually paramount in getting me started with this because it's honestly, it's always been something, and I don't, I've obviously probably shouldn't say this, it's always been something I've avoided because I didn't want to mix something I was so passionate with, with something I was trying to monetize. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's been so huge for me here is I figured out a way to merge them because I'm not just monetizing. I'm actually giving away a lot of free, oh, yeah. a lot of free assistance, a lot of free information. When you're in that 28 day challenge, it's not like I'm just going to give you resources and say, okay, I'll talk to you in four weeks. It's, it's daily checkups via messaging through the app. It's weekly follow-ups. Um, I post almost daily content in those groups. So not only are you going to be going through these motions, I'm going to be providing free training and free resources throughout the entire four weeks to just educate you and get you making healthier decisions. And really my goal with that is by the end of the four weeks, that we've instilled healthy habits. Cause it says, what do they say? 21 days to create new habits. Mm -hmm. So after four weeks, you should be well on your way with both your eating habits and with your physical exercise habits. And there's a lot of mindset in there as well. So, and then obviously if this is a pastor's group, we're going to have spiritual stuff in there too. So well, it's going to be, you know, it's really just the, the trifecta. And cool, together. cool for anybody's wife that might want to jump in. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, it's, he, it's co-ed. We're not, we're not yeah. posting like shirtless photos or something <laughs> in these groups. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very co-ed. Um, the challenges that I have running right now, it's just a whole, it's a whole mix of people, people that are already physically fit and they're just as excited about it as the people who are just getting into it. So it's, it's just a really good place. It's a good community. We have chat groups. Um, inside those groups, feel free to ask me any questions. I'm a resource for you guys. Like. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I would say this too, you're going to see, if you, if you follow, you're going to see some really amazing things. Uh, also, uh, I'm, and this is just a non encouraged plug for me, but if beyond that you're looking for, you know, somebody one-on-one -on -one to really help you, help you think through things and encourage you. And I mean, I've been super transparent with Dan about things that I'm ticked off about, things that I struggle with, things that I'm having a hard time with, things that are hard for me to face, you know, just, just, I've been able to be really genuine mm -hmm. and it's helped me. I mean, like I, I could, I'm not going to talk about it on the air, but just things that I've had to work through mentally. And I can just tell you that if, if, you know, a lot, and if you're anything like me and some of you guys are where you've struggled and you, it's been a challenge, it's work, it's uphill, um, having somebody to help you, um, you may not have ever admitted how much value you would find in, in a, in a, a, a person who understands what they're doing and is pushing you and not judging, but like, like literally will tell you, this is, this is what we need to go. I need that. And, uh, and I appreciate Dan. Dan's helped me a lot. And uh, so he's, we're going to, what we're going to do is, is from this episode, we're the date is September 4th. That's the start of this 28 day thing. Dan's email address, all of Dan's social, where you can follow him on Instagram, you can follow his Facebook page, all the different things that he has, they're all going to be on the show notes here. And this is just your entry way to make some great decision. If it leads to something beyond that with you and Dan, awesome. I mean, I think that's yeah. great. I just, just my personal opinion is it, it would even be worth beyond the 28 days, whatever investment you would make into it for your own good. Um, this guy knows what he's doing and I'm just glad to have you in the church. Glad to be, have, have his friend. Yeah, we love, we love being here and we're, we're happy to have you as our pastor. So, you know, Amen. and it's awesome. Just on another, like, and sometimes you look at, you can look not that I need you to know this plug, but Dan is also, um, uh, heavily involved in a, um, uh, a refugee soccer league here in our church where he's, he's ministering to, uh, 15 to 20, 
uh, refugees as their soccer coach and sharing the gospel with them. And I've just seen him have a passion for seeing people saved as well. So uh, much appreciated, man. So yep. Dan, any, any final words, just of encouragement, and then we're going to, we're going to sign off and, and get your information out there. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, and when you're hearing this, um, you're going to have, there's going to be a few weeks between the challenge and that. And I know I didn't talk a lot, about, a lot about my program. And that's really because if we're jumping into the challenge, that's a great way for them to connect yeah. with that anyways. And I don't know why you wouldn't take me up on that. So, right. And then once you get plugged into the challenge, I will have a consultation call with you where we can, we can talk about my services towards the end of the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, obviously no obligations, like pastor said, if you choose to go on your own, then that's, that's perfect. I have resources for you in that. Um, I would just leave you with this. Maybe just, um, you know, we have a few weeks between the time you hear this and when that challenge starts, just start making healthier choices. We, we left you with five, five things you can do right away to start making healthier choices. So get a kickstart on that. Start jumping it. Log where you started. That's a great way to see your progress. Log where you're at right now in your life, spiritually, mentally, and physically. What, what, what does that look like? I'm not saying you have to do a daily journal, but just creating a log that way you can see your, see where you were and see where you got. Yeah. Amen. I agree 100%. Guys, what an awesome uh, 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 episode here with Dan and Luke. Thanks for uh, hosting us here. Until next time, we hope you guys have a blessed week, and we will see you next week at the Church Fans Podcast. Thanks again for joining us for this episode. And remember, we'd really love it if you could leave us a five-star review and share this podcast with other pastors and church leaders that you may know that really helps spread the word about the podcast. The Church Advance podcast is hosted by Brian Sams. It's produced by myself, Luke Clayton, and my team at mustincrease.com. We look forward to having you join us in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation of partnership, fellowship, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sams. Oh, 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 oh